Look at that one. Look at the white belly on that joker right there, Rachel. That's our chicken from earlier. That is. This week on Kentucky Field, we're bringing in the new year by looking back on a few of our favorite segments from 2021. Whoa, this is a good one. That's better than good, Chad. It's all next on Kentucky Field. <laughs> Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plumb floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musky. <laughs> first Leo. Here it goes! Boom! Oh, oh. Oh. Wow, that happened fast. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. This week, we're going to continue with the theme of some of our most memorable trips out in the field in 2021. First up, we're headed back to a warmer time when we were shooting bullfrogs with an air rifle. We're out here today with a very familiar face and we're in Shelby County getting ready to do one of my all-time favorite activities and that's gigging or shooting frogs. Yeah, I'm so excited. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun. I know you've done this a lot and you've taken kids out shooting and gigging frogs. What a great way to introduce someone to the outdoors. It is a lot of fun. It's something great to do in the summer. Yeah. So if kids are out, the weather's great. Yeah. Everything's wonderful. We're gonna have so much fun. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. You know, there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can do it on a rod and reel. You can do it with a gig. You can do it with a rifle. You can shoot them with a bow. Tonight, I brought a couple air rifles and you... Brought gigs. I've never done anything but gig frogs. Okay. Well, I take that back. I've caught a couple with my hands, but I've never shot one with a gun before. So we're gonna try that tonight. I'm super pumped about that. You mentor so many people and get them involved in the outdoors. Yeah, I actually took my daughter on her first deer hunt. It was a blast, so much fun. <laughs> she still talks about it all the time. Your passion and love for the outdoors and mentoring really transitioned perfectly for you because recently you started a new position with the Department of Fish and Wildlife. You're now a Department of Fish and Wildlife employee. Yep. And you are heading up our R3 program, which tell me what R3 is. So R3 is recruitment, retention, and reactivation. So okay. if you've never hunted or fished before, we're gonna try and introduce it to you. If you're doing it, we just wanna make sure that you come back. And maybe if you left for a while or haven't done it in a few years, we wanna get you back into it and show you how much fun it is, how mm. it's a great hobby to have. Mm. and. Hopefully we'll get some frog legs yeah. so we can eat some later too. And if you've never had frog legs, this ranks right up there one of my absolute favorite things to eat. We got about 20 minutes till it's gonna be dark enough to kind of start making our way around. Mm -hmm. With those air rifles, you can sometimes start shooting them before it's completely dark and you don't even really have to spotlight them. So let's go get our gear. It's gonna be fun. Let's get yeah. after them. It's, it's gonna be a blast. Yeah. Well, Rachel, we got way too much gear. <laughs> I brought this little net. Probably wonder what in the world is he just gonna hand grab frogs? And I may grab a frog, yeah. but this is actually if we shoot one that's out in the water just a little ways. Well, I'm super excited about trying to shoot one, so I think we should try that first. All right, hey. That sounds good. Listen, you hear him? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get down here and take a look and see if we can not get you loaded up. We're gonna try to score your first frog with an air rifle right off the bat. Okay. We're just gonna leave these right here for now, and let's walk down and take a look. Sounds good. Oh yeah, you can see all their eyes. That's a good frog, Rachel. Why don't you go ahead and get loaded up? Okay. I probably need to sneak up a tiny bit closer with this gun. Oh, wrong way. I don't know why it's not pulling. Maybe I didn't cock it all the way. <laughs> Dang That's it. That's all right, he'll be back up here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't cock the pellet rifle all the way. And I think that frog would have been close enough for me to gig. That's okay, there'll be more. Get ready, because we're getting ready to see some big ones. I think like right in here by this big pipe, Chad, there should be a few sitting up here. Well, right there's one right there, but I believe that one's a hair small. 
That'll be next year's frog, what do you think? Yeah. We'll go on around, see if we can't find another one. That one looks a little bigger. It's not a big frog, but it might be good for your first one with an air rifle. I think this distance is probably pretty good, right? Yep. Oh, that was a good shot. This is what the net's for right here. I'll tell you one thing. Those air rifles will flat stone them. <laughs> That's crazy. Frog number one. Heck yeah. You know what? You get 15, I get 15. Let's try to get another one. Okay. I missed him. Got him. Didn't hit him where I wanted to, but the old pellet gun still took him down. That's a better frog. Oh, it actually went in right where I was aiming, but it came out here. Look, yeah. you think that doesn't do a number on them? It's really perfect for frogs, those air rifles are. Let's get loaded up again, okay. try to get us another one. I'll tell you one thing, the worst mistake you could ever make is take one of these air rifles and go, oh, it's a BB gun, they don't have to be safe with them. Yeah. I would hate to get shot with one of these. It could be really, really, really bad news. Absolutely. You gotta treat these just like a regular firearm. Keep them well, on the Well, they safety. for sure are. You smoky. Oh, Rachel, right there. Okay. You want to shine or shoot? You're up, I'll shine, you shoot. Let me make my way up here this way just a little bit. Ready? Yeah. All right, he's down and we got another one right here. Nice job, Rachel. Laying right there. Thank you. Look at that one. Look at the white belly on that joker right there, Rachel. That's our chicken from earlier. That is. I'll hold that light. Okay, you want this light here? Yeah. Nice shot, Chad. That wasn't as big as I thought, but we're gonna take it. Yep, he'll eat. I've had good frog legs at restaurants. They don't compare. No, not I even mean, close. When you go get fresh caught frog legs instead of farm raised, there's something about them that's just different. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, that frog's hit, and he's not too deep to still get. There we go. Heck yeah. Good frog right there. That'll eat. Oh, there's a big one in the water. Was I high on that? You know, I don't know, but that frog is gonna come back and we're gonna get that frog here in just a minute. He's on the bank now. Do I need to shoot him again? Yep. All right. Did I hit him or? Is he swimming? He's gonna come right back up to this bank. Yep, we got a blood trail. I've never seen a frog get away and leave a puddle like that. Oh no, it's crazy. That frog's coming back to the bank. I don't believe it needs another pellet. We're just gonna go up there and try to stick this net on it. Got him, good job. Well, did you see that? Did he get out of there? He snuck out the side. Dang it. Oh, there were two frogs. Oh, we got it. Okay. Here we go. This is that big one that we shot earlier. Heck yeah. That's a good frog right there. Look at that. The shot on this hit right here. Yeah, that's a good shot though. That's a Look great that. big frog. That's a good one. That's a really good frog. Heck yeah, he's gonna eat good. Hey Rach, we got a couple more ponds. So let's go regroup and I think I'm gonna leave the scoped air rifle. We'll take the other air rifle you got there. We'll lighten our load a little bit. Maybe we'll carry the gigs next time around. Yeah, we'll see if we can gig a couple. Let's go make it happen. Sounds good. I think you have it. Got him. What do you think, Rach? Can you make that shot? I'm gonna try. Oh! Good shooting, Chad. Got him. Nice job, Rachel. Look at that, that's a good frog. I think you got him. Yes, that's a good job right there. Not easy to get through those cattails like that. This is so fun. No, oh, there's a big one. Good job. You got him? Yeah. I can't hardly see. Oh, yeah. 
There we go. Good job, buddy. Nice. Oh, you smoked him. <laughs> well, Rachel, it's been great. I really it's do appreciate really it. Fun. Hey, for someone who wanted to know more about R3 and how to get involved and how to reach out and learn a little more about the outdoors. What's the best way for them to do that? Go to the website fw.ky.gov and then if you click on the education tab you'll find a learn to hunt fish and shoot tab. That's your best place to start. So there they'll take you to like our hook and cook classes or field to fork. We've also started putting together basic learn to hunt and fish information on our website too. Well I'll tell you what tonight was a perfect basic learn how to gather frogs. <laughs> Yeah. And you know what? We got a skillet full of goodness right here. Yes, we do. I can't wait. Have you ever wondered how some of our wildlife biologists collect data samples from an animal the size of an elk? Well, sometimes they have to rely on help from above. Today we're in Eastern Kentucky in our elk management zone. We are capturing elk with a helicopter this week. The purpose of what we're trying to do is we are evaluating our cow reproduction rates and our calf survival. So when we look at the population monitoring and what we do as a department, it's very important for us to know what percent of our cows are pregnant and then of those cows that are pregnant, what percent of them give birth to a calf and what is their survival rate. We've had a long history of elk research here in Kentucky. It goes back to when the first elk stepped off the trailer, it was wearing a radio tracking collar. You know, elk in the east are a new thing, and we're more or less writing our own book on elk management in the east. So this research is critical. It's a big operation. We've got almost 25 people out here today. excited to be working on this project. The data derived from this will definitely help guide our future management efforts throughout the restoration zone as a whole. Um, this calf survival study in particular is very, very important for us. Calves are the drivers of the population, so it's really important to know how many are living and dying. If anything is killing them, what might that be? What management decisions can we make to help bolster the population? What we're doing today, trapping these adult females, it's all a really important part of it. So essentially from the process that it works, we have a helicopter capture crew that flies over the elk. They locate and they peel off a single or a double, you know, a calf or a cow. They then shoot a net over the animal. The animal becomes entangled. And then they drop a man out on the ground, they call him a mugger goes over to that elk. Puts a blindfold on them, hobbles their legs together, gets the net off, puts them in a flight bag. He would then radio the helicopter crew. Um, she's all bagged up, Edge. The helicopter comes back in, drops a rope, hooks the elk up to the rope and then they fly the elk to us. So they do everything in the field, capture, process, and prepare them for flight, and then they bring them to us. When we're slinging these animals from where they're captured to our drop zone locations, which may be up to a mile or two miles from where we're set up working the animals, the helicopter crew, you know, they position the animal in there in such a way that it keeps its internal organs safe, keeps its spine aligned properly, so we can minimize our risk for injury during the transportation process. So once the elk lands, the first thing we want to do is make sure that it's in good physical condition from the capture. We immediately check a temperature to make sure that they're not too hot. We'll transport the animals down to our workup facility where we've got separate teams ready to take care of each animal. First thing we do at the processing facility is check temperature again, make sure they're at a good healthy level that they're able to be immobilized. At that point we do immobilize them. We wait for the mobilization drugs to put them fully asleep and then we begin the workup process. During the workup process, we'll draw blood from the animals to look at its overall health. They will get ear tags for us to be able to identify the animal. 
It will get a GPS collar that will allow us to track that animal through the life of the collar or the life of the animal. We collect hair for genetic analysis. We will also do a, just a total assessment of the body, looking at fat deposition and fat contents on the animal, just overall condition. We'll actually give them a numbing injection and we'll pull one of their front incisors and we'll send those off to a lab and they can tell us essentially how old the animal is by counting the rings inside the tooth, kind of like aging a tree. So my role here is to ensure the health and safety of the animals that we are catching for this project. We have an anesthesia tech on each animal making sure that they are having appropriate levels. I'm right there with them the whole time, making sure everything's good. We're really working hard to make sure these animals are safe while they're mobilized. animals do have a winter coat on, so if they come in just a little bit warm, we'll dump water on them or take other measures to make sure we get their temperature under control and we're doing everything safely and humanely as possible. We got another one on the way. So during the workup process too, you'll see us consistently trying to move the animal around. We're just trying to make sure that it remains in a safer position, and particularly with its head. We'll try to make sure that it's upright and in a natural position the best it can. That allows the animal to breathe sufficiently. When the helicopter crew is bringing us animals, they typically will bring them into us two or three animals at a time. We do this for a couple reasons. Generally, we don't want to stress and herd too much. We have very firm, established chase times so that they're not stressed out too much. It gives us time to really pay attention to each and every animal that comes in to make sure that they get through this process safely. Part of this project is with the University of Kentucky. We have two graduate students that are on the project to help with the data analysis and the data composition. So I'm really excited to be a graduate student at UK working on this project uh, with KDFWR. So I get to start to answer some of the questions that you all have and we all have about the elk herd here. We're looking at several management focused questions uh, in our research. So first off, we just want to know how much space these animals are using Out on the landscape. We can get that information from the collar data. This winter capture season here of adult elk is really kind of the precursor that sets us up nicely for our summer elk calf captures, where we'll be putting small transmitters on them and tracking them through their first year of life. So this time around, we get to do a ultrasound to check her pregnancy status to see if she is pregnant or not. And then if she is pregnant, we'll insert a transmitter and that will give us a notification of when she gives birth so that we can more easily go out and find that calf. Here's the transmitter that we put into the pregnant cow. So this elf had the workup complete. She's wearing a new radio collar, some fresh ear tags, and has a vaginal implant transmitter, and we've given her the reversal to the drug. And so here in about five or 10 minutes, she'll get off and head up the mountain. Some of the best fishing here in the state of Kentucky takes place in late winter and early spring. So start making plans now to hit the water. Today I'm out here on beautiful Del Hollow Lake with the gentleman who wrote the book about fishing Del Hollow Lake, literally. It's been quite a good experience. Uh, I've had people say, when are you going to do a book? And, you know, I said, well, I probably could write one, but i got to have somebody help me. So I've done stuff with Ed Harp with Bassmasters. We took all the questions that's been asked over the years and put down into print. We kind of put a bunch of years of experience together with them. You know, I absolutely love this lake, and I try to spend a lot of time down here, mainly in the winter months. but. We're at the end of March. This is the time of year to potentially catch a true Dale Hollow giant. Yeah, this is a real day. Some day it's chicken, some days it's feathers, but <laughs> you know, it's, uh, you've got to enjoy what you're doing and enjoy the hunt. Well, let's go find us a first spot and make a couple casts and uh, we'll converse and hopefully catch a couple fish. We'll get her done. All right, hold on, let's get rolling. Bob, what are you going to start off with? 
I'm gonna throw a spinner bait just a little bit, make a little bit of noise. All right. I think I'm gonna start off with a swim bait. You know, Bob, we got about 52, 53 degrees. You still need to fish slow because that's cold water, but it's that time of year that you can start speeding up a little bit. Yeah, we're in a good transition. I mean, that's really what it is this time of year. They're changing weekly, sometimes daily, but they're starting to speed up some. Got him? Got one. All right. Oh, it's a largemouth. Caught a green fish today. There we go. First fish of the morning. There you go. I usually catch about eight to 10 smallmouth for every one largemouth, and that's just mainly because of the areas that I like to target down here. So you know what that means? Yeah. That means we're gonna catch eight to 10 smallmouth today. Eight to 10 smallmouth because you we caught got, your largemouth. Because we caught a largemouth. It only makes the numbers right. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all about math. Hey, hook that belly. I know, that's a, that's a pretty healthy Almost fish. Almost as good as me and you. <laughs> oh, you got a way to go to get, <laughs> catch me. Yeah. Uh, we'll take it, that's a nice fish. Good job, Jack. There you go. So Bobby, how many years have you been guiding now? I've been guiding for around 25 years, but uh, 22, 23 years, I've been full time. You know, I had a lot of people that I knew fish professionally and something I've done since I was a kid, so it just seemed like the right thing for me to do. I'm sure you've probably got lifelong friends that you've met out here in the oh, boat. Absolutely. Oh, there he is. I don't think I have very good hooks set here, Bob. I'm gonna try to keep this fish low. All right. Pretty decent little smallmouth. There we go. Good job. I cast it up there and got hung in behind the rock. It was shaking that thing loose. It must have been just... Fish tuck it off the rock for you. It sure did. It sure did. Well, here we go. It's a pretty smallmouth. Hey, you know what? Considering these conditions, if we can get a couple bites when this water is flat. Think what's gonna do when the wind blows. It'll only get better <laughs> when we get, get some wind. Nice and beautiful little brown fish. Uh-oh, we got a fish on. Oh my goodness. Finally got one on spinnerbait, Chad. You've been telling me you catch one during daytime. I night fish spinnerbaits all the time. I really don't throw them in the daytime down here very much, but look, you got one. Hey, we got to try them to know, but yep. it's a daytime color for a spinnerbait right now in the spring, and I use it pre-spawn and post-spawn, so yeah. all there right, we go. Well, let's get that one back in and see if we can't right. catch another one. All right. What do you know? It ain't coming up. This might be a largemouth. Nope, brown fish. There, we go. there you go, thank you. Good job, Chad. He wasn't going nowhere. Punched it right through the top lip. That's where you want them right That's there. That's where you want them, right there. We'll take it. Here we go. Good one. This is a better fish. Come here, Joker. It's a good fish. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. I'll tell you what, Bob. We found some aggressive fish. There we go. They're gonna eat. Just got to be at the right place at the right time. Yeah, that belly don't stay like that by not eating, does it? No. There's one. Oh, got him? Yeah. That's a pretty good fish there. Now, what's that on, swim bait? On oh, swim bait. There you go. I'll take them all day. <laughs> swim baits turn things around, hasn't it? It's all about learning something new because we came out today, we drug swim baits on the bottom, caught a couple in the morning sped up our retrieve as the water warmed and got shallow. The tip of the day, you've got to keep trying different things until you figure out a pattern. Here we go. Coming to us. Oh, that's a good one. That's a chomp. That fish hit and felt like a ton of bricks and then swam right to the boat. I mean, just absolutely took the wind right out of that that swim bait. That is a toad. Look at the thickness on that fish. That's a prime pre-spawn Dale Hollow smallmouth right there. That's what you're looking for. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna get a weight on this one. I'm gonna say four pounds, five ounces. I'm gonna guess over four and a half. 414. That's right out of five pounds. I like when they're bigger than I think. Whoa, this is a good one. <laughs> That's better than good, Chad. 
<laughs> that was back-to-back -back cast. A 414, and what do we got here? Five. That in there's gonna go 21 inches. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. 21 and a half. Five one. Nine pounds, 15 ounces, and two casts. I'm glad you read my book. <laughs>Here at Kentucky Field, we are welcoming 2022 in hopes of great fishing and excellent hunting. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.